Hello guys, this is Mike from Deathless Gaming, and tonight we're going to start a new series called Taking Bases. Alright, so what is taking bases? Well, it's basically me going over some strategic geographic points on uh, each of the um, heavily fought over bases. So if you've been, you've most likely have been to these bases a lot, and I'm just uh, summarizing basically what points you really can attack to, and uh, hopefully help you improve your game single player or platoon. So at first we're starting at the Tarwich Depot, and we're going to go all the way to Regent Rock, which is a very common stretch of base to play um it's very all these bases are takeable and it, during alerts it goes back and forth a lot and it can get really frustrating so let's start with this entrance right over here this is kind of the main entr and not really the main entrance but it's one of the main entrances of the two this can get farmed a lot by vehicles and the same goes for the other entrance which you see over there so these two entrances are the main entrances to the base but however, if you look at this third entrance over here, this can, if you pound on those two entrances, allow you to start uh, having the infantry slip through the cracks. Now, once you start overwhelming them there, there is this fourth um, little nook and cranny right here where you can have light assaults going to the A point. And if you see that, that is really good because, you know, you don't, you can just, you know, have people salting, and if the Sundeer gets blown up, you can hold the point for just a little bit longer with light assaults. It's really just helpful as a nuisance, and uh, it's a great place to hide a Sundeer. Let's move on now to Broken Arch Road. Now, this one is always a pain in the ass. I think you guys all agree with me on this one. Um, so, people always park their Sundeers up here, right here. And this is a good place to assault because it uh, gives semi-easy access to the way uh, A point. But that has a very heavy fire from the spawner. So I'm going to show you this secret place I have uh, found. Of course it's known so by many players already, but a lot of people just don't use it for some reason. So it's annoying. At the other point, you can have them spawn Sundiers here. And up this secret little pass, you can take control of that main hill. Um, over the spawner and that is extremely valuable. I mean, oh my gosh This pair it basically gives you a two-way flank on broken arch road if you need to take it and it really crushes it I mean like if you're having problems at all this would like because you're getting you can fire upon the spawn room And on top of that you can have access to the a point and get sunders to that a point so it's a very good place. Now this cliff over here, I mean it's nice and all, um, it's a great thing, but this is where the farmers are and they don't really um, contribute as much as they could. The last salts can get to A point, so it's sort of helpful to have a Sundia here, but um, not as much as um, having the Sundia's flood where I just show you. Let's move on to crossroads and oh my gosh crossroads is one of the most father uh, over bases in the entire game besides regent rock and the crown on Yundar. so uh the first is that main hill obviously what i'm showing you right now but also this hill right here this hill is a great place to um use that back entrance to broken arch and get more sunders out here without getting too much heavy fire and using both the first and second hill i have just showed you you can really assault. And this secondary hill really allows you to get into this gap on C point without taking too much fire since it gives you a little ravine. And another way you can get into that gap by, uh, I think it's C point, yes it is C point, is by going through the crown. If you have the crown it's very useful. Now the worst situation you ever have though with crossroads is the enemy owns the cr uh, crossroads and the crown and that's a horrible situation and it's practically almost impossible to take it now uh, here's a back entrance to Xeno Tech Labs I think a lot of people know about that but if you don't FY here it is and Xeno Tech Labs is pretty um, sort pretty easy to take 
but please don't really use the entrance by that spawn room right here that I'm showing you. It's really not as good as it could be. I mean, like, sure, if you're already on a point, you can use it to cut off the spawn room. But really, this entrance, this gateway by the turret, allows much more easier access uh, to the a point if you have sun ears parked here. And let's say they want to flood a point at the last minute before you capture it, you can just have a bunch of guys respawn and hop into the a point in almost no time whatsoever. So this really is one of the more actually important points to get a Sundeer near. Now, Xeno though does have that weird Sundy spawn piece of crap that I think needs to be fixed, but this is still a very useful area to use. Now aside, this is the last space we're going to go over, Regent Rock. It's a pain in the ass. Now aside from this main hill, hill over here that you really have to get control of before you can start attack, you can, once you get control of that main hill, come around this flank, which a lot of people try to do, but if you really flood this flank, you can get a nice another flank on the Regent Rock. Now again, Regent Rock's a tower, so even if you fully flanked it, you really have to flood it with pop a lot. But again, that, that back way allows you to uh, get a lot of tanks, and possibly even sun deers on this cliff face right here. So that really is a great back way. Now, one of the problems that I see with people, don't ever take uh, Scarred Mesa Skydock this bridge route. This bridge route is never, ever going to get you anywhere. It's just horrible. Hor horrible, okay? So again, those are some geographic positions for Sundays and where you can push with your entrance, uh, infantry. Now, always gal drops are useful, but once you always get a gal drop and you're holding that point, you really have to have a really good place where that pop is flooding in, and it really helps if you have pop flooding in on both sides. So if you have, let's say, not a full zerg of 96, but let's say 48 pop, if you have 48 just going on one side, that's not that helpful, as opposed for a 24 attacking the base on one side, and 24 to backing the base on others. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. I'll be making a second one in the series pretty soon. Uh, this is Mike from Deathless Gaming uh, saying goodbye. I'm going to fly around with my dolphin. Happy, happy me.